In this text, uh, in Ezekiel here, it is, it is the Lord prophesying through Ezekiel. And, and he's, it says, if, if you've read this, this book at all, you'll find that it's the, it's the chapter leading up to the Valley of Dry Bones. And, and what the Lord is, is prophesying through Ezekiel He's prophesying that there will be a, a resurrection and a restoration, if you will, for the true house of Israel. Uh, oftentimes, I believe that we're, it's twofold, and oftentimes I believe that, you know, we, we put too much emphasis, if you will, on, on a country or a certain group of people, etc., uh, but but this is this is also speaking to you and I this morning, in the sense that um, Israel at the time had fallen away from the Lord in such a way um, they had turned to idols. As as you read what the Lord was speaking to Ezekiel, He said, "You have profaned my name to the heathen." You've made light of me, if you will. You've, you've profaned me. You've turned your back on me. You've, you've did all, all manner of things against me and against my, my you know, everything that I am. You've, you've spit on me. This is the Lord speaking to Ezekiel about what Israel as a people had done then. But obviously, as he goes on into his, his prophecy, he begins to say, but I'm going to put a new spirit in you. So now that starts associating with us, doesn't it? And then I'm going to put a new heart in you. I'm going to take out, he says, the hardened heart. I'm going to put a new heart in you. How many, how many knows that we need a new heart? And, and so, but the, the, the Lord is beginning to, to ex- explain or describe exactly what he, he is going to do. How, rather, He's going to change a people in the future. Because He says, notice this, I'm not doing this for you. Isn't that something? I ain't changing your heart for you. I'm not changing your spirit for you. I'm doing this for me. You read the same book I did, right? I, I don't, I, I, y'all, it, it sounds as if, again, I, I must speculate here, but it sounds as if the Lord is saying, treating us like children. You've had your way long enough. Now I'm going to have my way. How many is glad he had his way? Amen. You, you've, you've had your way long enough, and so now I'm going to have my way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from you your evil spirit, your nasty spirit, and your hard heart, and I'm going to give you one that's more susceptible to me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad of that. Amen, I'm glad of that. And so let's, let's look at this and compare and contrast. What we're going to find, ladies and gentlemen, that was taking place is that although Israel had seen the hand of God, how many's ever seen the hand of God? Although Israel had seen the hand of God, I mean, they have seen God work in ways that you and I only dream of seeing God work. They have seen God walk into uh, Egypt through the man of Moses and Aaron, and they had seen pestilence drown that place. They had seen blood flow through rivers. They had seen a pestilence of frogs and flies and, and hell just come from the, the heavens and destroy crop and kill oxen. and I mean, almost bankrupt one of the strongest countries and nations that there were at the time. They'd seen a death angel come through there like a thick fog in the middle of the night, but 
But everyone that had that blood above the doorpost, the death angel, you know what, Laser? The death angel didn't knock. The death angel didn't ask and inquire what was inside or other side of that door. The death angel just noticed the blood and kept right on going. Aren't you glad of that? It, they, they'd seen this. They witnessed this with their own eyes. They witnessed the man of Moses that was pulled from the bulrushes. They were supposed to have been dead, but God preserved him. Is that not right? The system, the law in that day required his life. But you know what? You can't take what God has already published. And God had already prosecuted and published this man and placed him in a place of, of stature and stability and in a place of historical value that you and I would read and glean from and draw faith from even today. The well of Moses is still running this very hour. And Egypt, or rather Israel, had seen the hand of God through Moses. There was no denying, even if you're in, in, in slavery for 400 years, there's no denying the hand of God. No matter if you'd been destitute for 400 years with no voice, Boisting and, and speaking of the goodness, I guarantee you there was plenty of blue hair, if you will, plenty of gray hair, men and women that still reminisced around fires at night about Jehovah God that brought, that had always kept their people from the beginning until then. There was plenty of stories that went around in, in silence, if you will, in whispers at the heat of the day through Egypt when they're toying for a master that they should not be enslaved to. And, 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 and remembering about Joseph and remembering about his supernatural ability to, and to inherit and, and interpret dreams and visions and revelations. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, he was the only reason, Joseph, that little dreamer boy, was the only reason why the nation of Egypt could even proclaim its dignity and security in an economy is because God's child, God's seed, God's people could hear the voice of God and secure the nation throughout infinity. It would, they knew this. They understood this. They still sing songs about Joseph. They would still sing of Joseph. They would still talk of Joseph. Some of his ancestors, some of his grandchildren, great, great, great far removed, was still in the presence. Oh, you have the, the blood of, of Joseph running through. You have the blood of Jacob running through you. You're special. You're different. I guarantee you they was treated different in the bread line. How many is with me today? There was a lot of, there was, there was a gentleman uh, uh, that you got to understand something. God's people has always been a people of identity. It's, it's just in our nature to identify with things and identify with people and identify with spirits and, uh, and identify with surroundings. And Israel is no different then than they are now. Are you with me? We still must identify who our company is. We still must identify who we marry. We still must identify who we link up with. We still got to be identity people. Are you with me today? But getting past that, they, they had saw the hand of God. They knew the hand of God. They had witnessed the hand of God. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, after you've just went through the nation of Egypt and you have taken from them every gold uh, coin they had and every silver spoon that they had and, and every nugget that they had and you had put it in your little satchel and you were leaving this place. And, and after 400 plus years, you're leaving. And, and you're not having to escape at night. The king is saying, go. After 400 years of keeping you there, building walls of thought and building walls of circumstance and completely making you feel as if you were in prison, you, there was no hope for those people. There was no way of escape for, the, for Israel. During Egyptian bondage, that there was, there was, ladies and gentlemen, there, they wasn't going to go to the bank and get a loan and relocate. They were in slavery, but in just months' time, just several months, the king is saying, "Go." Oh, let that sink into you for a minute. Uh, they, 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 they knew this. Here's a young boy that had been absolutely. Uh, you, you want to talk about a crazy man. You want to talk about circumstances. Here's Moses. He, he killed one of the Egyptians and fled for his life. He was a fugitive. He was a fugitive out in the wilderness. No one could touch him there. He, he blended in with his surroundings. Moses was the type of the church, and he just blended with his surroundings. Until one day, there come a call on Moses. 
Moses, guess what? You can't do this no more, Moses. You're going to have to get on back in there. You was born for a reason. You were secured for a reason. And here comes this fugitive right back into the enemy's camp. And guess what the Lord does? The Lord saves him, protects him, and he stands before the king, the Pharaoh, and he says, let him go. How many knows we need to be let go? He said, let him go. So after all these years of slavery, now we find, ladies and gentlemen, the, the king's had enough, Pharaoh's had enough. He says, get out of here. And so they rob these people blind. And they're walking out. I don't know if there was any dances. I don't know if there was any songs being sung. I know, know this, there were songs written about it. And as they're leaving Egypt, there was a dust cloud. Imagine this, if you can, a couple million people sucking themselves from an economy. One of the greatest migrations the world's ever known. E leaving Egypt and going to this promised land. I don't know about you, but we need to be headed toward the promised land. And ladies and gentlemen, now, I, I don't know the circumstances and how everybody thought, but I can tell by, speculate by just a little bit of the writings. I'm here to tell you, these people was, was simply just following Moses. Their heart, there was nothing in their heart there was nothing good in their heart that said, we can do this. Because it ain't been just days. And they find themselves at the Red Sea. How many remembers that? You heard about that in Sunday school, didn't you? They find themselves in the Red Sea, and guess what? Their backs to Pharaoh, and their faces to the Red Sea. And instantly, show you the development of the heart, or the, or the problem with their heart. Instantly, they said, why did you bring us here to die? Wasn't there enough graves there? And he's like, you boys need to take a chill pill. Then he just relax. I mean, I mean, have you forgotten so quickly what just happened a month ago back there in Egypt? But what has happened, ladies and gentlemen, their heart was getting hardened even, even at this place in life. And Moses basically said, this is, this is, this is the McKinney verdict, uh, version, rather. He says, shut up. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be quiet. I'm tired of hearing it. Can you, hey, could you imagine a million people? Some of us were like, man, I wish my wife would be quiet. And the wife said, I wish my husband would be quiet. But he had millions following him. Nobody does that but me. I'm sorry. God bless you. Man, I'd like to have some silence for a minute. I'm just jesting. He had, he had millions of people nipping at his heels. Saying, man, could you imagine the fingers that was pointed at him that day on the side of that hill? How, well, how dare you? You gave us false hope. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? I imagine even, even Aaron was probably taking a few steps back, sort of separating himself from the people and from Moses because I, I don't know how this is going to fall. And Moses was hearing the voice of God. He knew he had heard the voice of God. He knew the hand of God. And he knew beyond a certainty that this is a place where God was about to show himself in a way that he had never showed himself before. And the Lord said, he said, just, just point, the, the, just point the, the rod, Moses. Imagine the dust cloud of the enemy, the one that's had you in prison for 400 years, is now coming, approaching me very quickly. Uh, the greatest army the world has ever known up to this date is they're pursuing you, and you're just a bunch of farmers, you're just a bunch of shepherds. But the Lord's got a rod in a man of God's hand, and he puts it across the Red Sea, and the Bible says that it popped. I mean, you could just go on and on and on, story after story. Across the Red Sea, everybody's happy now. There is songs being sung. There is hymns being written. Moses let God's children. Forty years he led them. You ever heard that? Songs was being sung. Hymns was being written. And, and everybody was, was growing strength and vigor. But ladies and gentlemen, one minute they didn't like meat. Next minute they didn't like vegetation. You couldn't keep them happy. There was no way to keep them happy. They was rebellious. They were just like you and I. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, to, to, to get to where we're at today, the Lord says, look, you've, you've allowed a heart of stone to get inside of you. Zechariah 7 and 11 says, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. 
Everybody stop. And he says, yea, they made their heart as an adamant stone. You can unstop them now. Twelfth verse says, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone that they should, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Now, this, this, I, I had to do some study, and I, I love this. I wanted to just dig into this, but time would not allow me. But this stone that it's referring to, it, now the Lord is speaking to Zechariah even in this, and, and he's explaining how they guarded their heart. He said they put a guard on their heart lest they hear the law and change. Some of this you'll be able to see in modern times. You'll be able to understand where we're at today. They, 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 the Lord is saying they constructed briars. How many have been through a briar patch? They constructed briars around their heart. He used the same verbiage and wording, rather, that, that the shepherds used in order to protect the gates of the sheepfold. And they put, he says, my people have put briars around their heart because they did not want even the goodness of God's word to penetrate them. How many is with me today? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know life is tough and I know things is difficult at times and we've all been through stuff that really, really, really could make us hard, cold people. There ain't no doubt about it. Some of us are hard, cold people. Some of us don't even know we're hard, cold people. There's a reason why he says, I've got to pull out your stony heart, your cold heart, and I must put in a fleshly heart. The word fleshly, ladies and gentlemen, it simply means soft. It don't mean he's finally given you a real heart. You was born with a real heart. It don't even mean this blood pump that you have in your chest. But rather, he's speaking about a conscience. He's speaking about something in your persona, something in your spirit that bends to the Word of God. He's talking about something that he puts in your spirit or your heart, so to speak, that makes you pliable and makes you movable and makes you constructible and makes you willing to work with God and move with God and be convicted by God and, and, and be able to take correction by God, but rather just get mad when God speaks. I'm going to talk to you now. And so what, what, what the enemy does, ladies and gentlemen, he, he wants to come at you from every angle you can imagine. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to get you to build a fence up around your heart. I've had people tell me, I won't get hurt no more. I've, I've blocked that. I, I won't let my guard down anymore. Anybody's ever heard that? There ain't no scripture in the world that says put a guard up for your heart. There ain't nothing in the Bible. that No, the Bible says suffer persecution. How many is with me today, saints of God? The, the, the Lord didn't say, well, you need to protect yourself, baby. You need to protect yourself, son. Just, just, you need to just remember, mark, just mark that. Just protect yourself. No, he didn't. He said, man up. He said, woman up. How many is with me today, saints? <laughs> trials, will trials come? Absolutely. How many is with me? Uh, you think Job wanted a bunch of trials? No, but they still come. You think Paul wanted more trials? No, but they still come. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, they was the one writing about they had a crown of righteousness waiting for them because they didn't, they didn't get a whole stony ground around their heart. They said, I'm open and I go open book. Lord, use me, move me, plow me, whatever you need to do. I just want to be right with you. How many wants to be right with him? Think about it. No, he, he said, look, he, he said, you, you, we, we go through life, and we go through things. My God, we go through things. And we want to just quit. We want to just stop. We get mad at the same person so much, 
when we see them, uh, all we want to do is just show them I'm mad. Treat them like I'm mad. Let them know I'm mad. Let them know they grieved me. Let them know they, they, they was mean. Let them know they hurt me. We can't show them no compassion. You've heard the old term, if you was on fire, I wouldn't take a leak on you. I mean, he's heard that before. Right? Hey, hey, that's, a, that's a way of us saying, I don't care. Die and go to hell. Are you with me, saints? We don't care. If, I've had people say, I want you to be saved, but I want you to be saved somewhere else. I don't want you around me. You see, we go through even in a relationship and marriage. You'll, you'll see the husband and wife, they'll act just like they hate one another. He grieved her. She grieved him. She hurt him. He hurt her. And you know what? Their heart is getting harder and harder and harder. And you know what happens if one of them does want to change? If one of them truly does want to change, then he can't get through that stony heart because the, 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 the spouse has built this, this, this thorny thing around their heart. It's for protection. Are you with me? They think they're protecting themselves, but all it was was Satan was eating it and eating and putting a root of bitterness there and putting a root of anger there. And the Lord said, look, I got to take that heart out and I got to give you a flesh, a movable heart. Because if you can't forgive 70 times 7, you oh, yeah. come on, somebody. Think about it. You remember what Jesus said in Matthew and, and 24? Uh, can, can I just preach this? Sheesh, boy, I, I don't know about you, but I feel my help. How many feels your help? Amen. And Jesus said in Matthew 19 and 8, he says, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to go put away your wives. But from the beginning, it wasn't so. Yeah, he says, now notice what Jesus, how many knows Jesus is the final say? Jesus said, because of your hardness. You know what he was saying? He was saying, look, Moses got tired of counseling y'all when y'all's heart was already set to not hear it. Moses got tired of counseling you. I could not allow my servant to waste another breath with you knowing that your heart was so hard. No matter if God himself come down from heaven, you would not move or budge. This is in the book. He says, look, I, I would have loved. You know what this hardness means? It means destitution of spiritual perception. You see, you, you think, well, I, I'm protecting myself. This is a guard. This is like a bulletproof vest around my heart. No, it's called rebellion. It's called stubbornness. It's called bitterness. It has a root, and the root is Satan. And unless we dig that root out and pluck that root out, we'll go to hell with a hard heart. Come on, somebody. Because the Lord, what we've done is we got a, we got a heart, we got a conscience, and it was so ripe and beautiful when we was young. And, and yes, people abused us. Yes, husbands abused you. Yes, wives abused you. Yes, uh, cousins abused you and aunts and uncles. And maybe your daddy did. And maybe your mama did. But it was a ripe and it was a beautiful conscience that was just pulsating and, and running. And every time you knew not to do, you do this and you done it, it convicted you. And it, it made you cry and it made you weep and it made you turn to God. And it was a beautiful thing. It still is a beautiful thing and over a process of time people just spit on you and, 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 and messed on you and, 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 and it got harder and it got harder and it got harder and the Lord said I want to save you Nino I want to save you Malcolm I want to save you Sister Sherry but I'm going to have to take that conscience that you got and I got to pull it out of you and I got to put you another fresh one in because you won't even hear the laws of God you won't even hear the beckoning voice of God you won't turn an ear to God you want to run from my voice Think about it. I got to take it from you, and I got to give you a, a fleshy one. I want one that's moldable. I've said this many times. As some of the pottery that comes out of India, it's the most beautiful, most, 
most valuable potter, pottery ever. And they literally go out in their little shack and dig it out of the ground. Because it's everywhere. The clay that's needed. And they go and dig it out. The, and brother, can't you? They just start making it. Put it on that potter's wheel. And they're going to make it. And my, it's beautiful. Some of us go into king's palaces and princes. And, but you know what, ladies and gentlemen? They get, they get in this little batch of clay. And you know what they're... They can be blind as a bat and do this. You know what they're, they're feeling for? Resistance. How many is with me? It's imperfections, yeah. But they're feeling for resistance. Because if, if that clay won't give, then they can't mold it. And, 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 and you, you ask that question to the, to the master potter. You say, well... What separates a vessel from going to the king's mansion to the potter's house or the pauper's house? He said resistance. It's the same clay, same colors, same ingredients. Some clay resist and some clay don't. The stony heart resists. I could preach to you and another man could preach you to their blue in the face. But unless you release yourself, unless you allow yourself to be molded, you're determining where you're going. How many is with me today? Are you with me today? Matthew 24 and 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Are you with me? Because iniquity shall abound. Because we're constant in it. Because it's constantly around us. Speaking of iniquity. Then eventually you find yourself losing the one thing we're supposed to have. Love. We find that our heart just cannot love no more. We find that we have no more to give. I can't tell you since I've been in ministry how many people has told me, I just want to quit. I just want to give up. I don't, Jonathan, I don't even care. I don't even care where my children are at. I don't even care where my husband, I don't even care where my wife's at. I don't care. I'm like, how you get there? I'm thinking, how you get there? I don't care about nothing. I don't clean the house. I don't, I don't make sure they have good clothes. I don't care. I don't care. How much? Anybody ever been there? I'm tired. I, I, I want to quit. I just want to stop. I just want to give up. That's exactly what, what's, what the enemy wants you to do. He, he's doing his job and he's doing it good. He's using everybody he possibly can, can to, to accomplish what he's sent to do. It isn't by, by mistake that you're, that you're here this morning. It isn't by mistake that, that your heart is in the condition that it is. Something is working against you, but also something's working for you. I want you to listen to this. Mary Magdalene, you remember her? Mary Magdalene, she's the lady with the alabaster box. According to text, we're going to find that at least seven devils were cast out of her. Seven devils cast out of her. This woman had been put through the ringer. History says she was anything but a good woman. History says she had been abused in many ways and, and was constantly abusing her own self. Ladies and gentlemen, there was no reason for this lady. No reason at all for her to, to be looking for help or be wanting help, especially in a man. But you know what we find, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus... On that third day, and that grave was rendered empty. You know who we found at the grave? Mary Magdalene. That's who we find. We, we find a, a used-to-be prostitute, if you will. We find a lady with seven devils cast out of her. Can you imagine the maniac that she was? Seven devils. Don't look shocked. Some of you got more than that. 
seven devils and they were cast out of her. Can you imagine what embarrassment it would be if I, if I throwed one of y'all down in here and cast some of those devils out? How embarrassed? Y'all wouldn't even come back. No, no, you wouldn't be at the altar tonight. You wouldn't be rejoicing. You'd be embarrassed that everybody knew. Are you with me? You'd be embarrassed. Isn't it amazing that we would rather be in, be, be in bondage by our spirit than be embarrassed by us exposure that we may be closer to God? Our heart is crazy tonight. Our heart is messed up. Don't deliver me. My brother may find out. Don't deliver me. My wife may find out. Don't deliver me. Don't deliver me. Don't heal me. I know I got this problem, but it's going to stay with me. I'll get rid of it in private. You got it in private. You won't get rid of it in private. Think about it. It's amazing how crazy our hearts can be, our conviction, our conscience. And it won't allow us to bend. And the Lord is saying, look, I absolutely need to get rid of that stony one you got. You've got it. But no, she gets delivered of her devils. She busts her alabaster box on his feet. And she cries those tears and washes his feet as the Pharisees look on in hatred and vitriol. A woman with the says she was literally throwing herself at Jesus in a spiritual way. And she was saying, take this away from me. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, if she had a stony heart, she'd have been like the Pharisees. She'd have had on her religious garment, still full of the devil. She'd have had on her prayer bead, still full of the devil. She'd have been sitting there with her legs crossed, all prissy like, uh, with her nose up in the air, just like the Pharisees, still full of the devil. Because her heart would have been stony. But because, ladies and gentlemen, she used her calamities. She allowed her trouble. She allowed her indiscretion. She allowed her life to mold her. It was changing her. It was helping her. It was making her ground fertile for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was easy to plant a seed in her bosom that said, I want to worship my King of kings and Lord of lords. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who rebukes me. I don't care who left. Make me a Soft heart, oh God. Oh, think about it. Think about it. Well, what has caused you to be bitter? What has caused you to hurt? Is your love waxing cold because your heart has grown stony? You know, when a person has a heart disease, they have to have open heart surgery in layman terms. The hardening of the arteries. As the heart begins to harden, it, and there's arteries where the blood comes in and circulates, and then it becomes contracted, if you will, and it gets hard and becomes stubborn at that point. And now there's no resistance, or rather, no flow. Instead of it massaging the blood in and out and then it's, it becomes constricted, restricted and things can build up as things begin to build up then of course you lose blood flow and obviously you know what happens from there strokes and heart attacks etc etc what has happened with us saints of God is when we allow our, our heart to get a little hard and the flow ain't no good and when the flow isn't good then we get built up and build up and build up and then you find yourself, somebody's here, you find yourself in anxiety, you find yourself stressed, you find yourself fatigued all the time, you find yourself angry all the time. Are you with me? And before long, ladies and gentlemen, you can't even live with yourself, much less anyone else. And when somebody comes to you and they try to help you with, with the word, and, you, you, and some of us is like this, we can't study, we can't read, we can't pray. None of that makes sense to us. You don't, know, you don't know where I'm at. What do you mean I don't know where you're at? You mean to tell me you're at a place where the Bible can't help you? You mean to tell me you're at a place where prayer can't help you? You mean to tell me you're at a place where fasting can't help you? You mean to tell me you're at a place where God can't help you? Because that's what you're telling me. When you say, no, no, no. The Lord said, you don't want my law. You've clogged your ears up. You don't want to hear about David. You don't want to hear about Solomon. You don't want to hear about Moses. You don't want to hear about anything that could deliver you. Because your heart is hard. Think about it. We've built, we've built, 
brigades around our heart. A lot of, lot of us feel this way. Well, I'm a man. You know, I don't show emotion. That's ridiculous. Jesus wept. No, we have to be pliable, haven't we? Don't we? Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, he said, it wasn't so. He says, your heart had become so stubborn to me. What, what about it this morning, saints? What, what is my heart stubborn towards? What is your heart stubborn towards? Well, I'm just in rebellion. Some of us are, see, some of us are stubborn about things that nobody knows about. Others are stubborn about things everybody knows about. But it's all a heart condition. You know, I, I'm, I'm stubborn about this, and you're stubborn. Now, I don't want to hear it. I don't think nobody should hear it. I think we should just kill it. Amen. Well, you don't need to tell me all your junk, because I ain't telling you all my junk. How many is with me? So I don't want to give you the opportunity to look, look less of me, think less of me. And I don't want to be challenged with the opportunity of thinking less of you. I'm just trying to get through this like you are. I'm just trying to get through this. Amen. And so, so what am I being stubborn about in my heart? What, what am I, how am I resisting? Lord, make me a soft heart. You know why we're not being led by the Spirit? Because the Spirit is leading a lot of us, but we're resisting the Spirit. It's going against how we feel it should be. It's going against how we feel it, how we feel it is. It's going against maybe how we was taught. And so we resist. It don't mean necessarily we're evil people. It just means our heart ain't quite right to receive what God has for us. I mean, He's with me. I've had people tell me, they say, well, brother, <clears throat> you've heard this. You don't know what I've been through. You don't, know, you don't know where I'm at right now. You don't know what I'm struggling with. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. And I said, you're right, but God does. How many believes he knows? And so he said in this text, he says, and, and because iniquity shall abound, he said, the love of many shall wax cold. He said, because iniquity, hear me real closely, iniquity is not going nowhere. Do we realize that? Iniquity is here to stay until the Lord completely purifies this place of iniquity. It's here. It, 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 no president is going to bring beautiful harmony and peace with everybody. No president is going to stop same-sex marriage and pedophiles. Are you with me? No president is going to do that. No, iniquity is going to abound. Meaning, we've got to live in this iniquity. It's going to be around us. It's going to be with us at Walmart. It's going to be with us at Target. It's going to be with us wherever you go. And let me ask you something. As it grows increasingly more evil, what are you doing to protect your heart? What are we doing to protect ourselves? Guess what? Your spouse is going to come home one day more full of the devil than you thought she was before. Your husband's going to come home one day, same way, more full of the devil than you thought he was before. All right, but guess what? There's still your husband and your wife. How are you going to guard your heart? What, what barriers are you, what, what safety nets are you putting up to be like, all right, look here, baby, this is what we got to do. We, we know this is here to stay, but I'm here to tell you, we don't have to fall. Substitute to this, we, let's join hands, let's pray, let's rebuke this thing, let's move. How many is a, think about it. We, we know that the devil is coming after our children. We know he's using everything under the sun. He's using cell phones. He's using video games. He's using pornography. He's using everything you can imagine. It ain't going away. No president's going to change that. No good preacher is going to change that. It's here to stay. What are we doing to keep our hearts perceptive? What are we doing to guard our family? What are we doing to guard our little children's heart? What are we doing? It's time that we put some safety nets in place. It's time we get the word of God back in our homes. It's time that we get prayed back in our homes it's time that we put guardrails around our family it's time that we take steps 
Think about it. Think about it. I was telling one of the ladies uh, in, 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 uh, earlier this morning about, and I just brush over this lightly, about the, mention the mark of the beast. And I said, you know, everybody's got in their mind, because we've been taught this way, they think beast, and, and they think beast, a person, for instance, or some four-headed creature, or whatever the case. But, but the more it's unraveling, we're living in some, in some interesting times. We're actually getting to see things unveiled. Things that maybe 50 years ago that, that our, 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 our forefathers didn't really understand. They were preaching it the way they understood it at the moment. But now we're starting to see stuff. And, and, and now, and now if, you're, if you're thinking with your eyes open at all, and your heart is exposed at all, and, and you, you're letting God just sort of speak to you, then you realize this beast that we're looking for ain't a person at all. But it's a system. And I read, I read an article, uh, or Senator Ted Cruz mentioned that oh, Biden was, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, President Biden was, was floating around the idea of uh, you had to be vaccinated for interstate travel. Well, that's crazy, isn't it? You mean to tell me I won't be able to travel the interstate unless I get vaccinated? Does anybody hear what I'm saying? You mean to tell me? All right, so we understand, ladies and gentlemen, that... that what they're saying is we don't want you on the roads traveling. Commerce, interstates used for commerce, unless you get a vaccine. Now, I, I, don't, I don't care if you get a vaccine. I'm not against vaccines if you want a vaccine. You go do whatever you want to do. But I'm here to tell you, ladies, I'm against, absolutely against with everything in me. They're making you do something you don't want to do. Don't tell me I can't. Don't tell me I ain't. Don't tell me I won't. Amen. I'm still free as far as I know. Are you with me? And so, but 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 you see, I, I got, there's restaurants in New Orleans right now. You're not coming in these doors unless you get vaccinated. Well, guess what? That's their right. They can they could not service me if they would like, and it's my right to turn my back and walk away. Amen. Are you with me? What what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, the the, the beast is here. He's always been here. He ain't never he ain't never departed for any season or time. He's here. But what are we doing with our heart to guard the fact to realize that I'm still going to stick with this word no matter what comes. No matter what comes, I'm following this book. And I don't care what kind of slavery comes. I don't care what kind of persecution comes. I'm standing with Jesus Christ. It makes you think, ladies and gentlemen, as the martyrs in history, man, their heart must have been conditioned to look down a gauntlet, to look at a cross and say, I can do that. To look at a chopping block, knowing your head is about to be dismembered from your body, and say, I can do that. Man, where was their heart at? It wasn't hardened, was it? What about Jesus? His heart wasn't hardened. Let me, let me throw something at you. Could you imagine being born? And your father is a spirit. The Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and she conceived and bare a son. The only daddy figure you got died at a young age, Joseph. It's the only daddy figure you got. And so your mama, she don't understand you. Your disciples don't even understand you. You're going to pray because you're grieved almost to death, and they're asleep under a tree. And, and, and yet you know, you already know what you got to face. Any other young boy... If they was in them same shoes, ladies and gentlemen, they'd be a wreck. They'd be heroin addicts. How many is with me? Without the grace of God, they'd have went the wrong way. Isn't that right? I ain't had no daddy, Brother Jonathan. I ain't had no mama, Brother Jonathan. I, I know, and those are bad things, and I'm here to tell you, it's detrimental to a young man or young woman. Ain't no doubt about it. It don't serve them no good. It don't help them any at all. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about it. What, what, where was God's heart? What was the condition of the Lord's heart? That he made this statement for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. My Lord, his heart was just pliable. And his heart was screaming, all I want is the will of God. I don't care what happens. I don't care what they say about me. They're spitting in my face. They're mocking me. They're calling me every name under the book. They're rebuking me. They're, 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 I know they're going to persecute the people that follow me. They're going to they're be ridiculed. They're going to be 
on it, but my heart was saying, give, just give me God's will. Let me do the will of God. Let me be the will of God. Let me. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get our heart to the place that all of life, all the things that we go through, does never penetrates that conscience. It never hurts that conscience. And we're always open before the Lord. And we're saying, God, I don't care what comes, what falls, or what happens. Lord, I just want to be pleasing to you. Remove this stony heart and give me that fleshly heart. How many is with me today? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I'm going to say this to you in closing. I'm going to say this. Iniquity will abound. But let's keep our love intact. Amen. Can you imagine for one second looking at the person as Paul did that was about to take his head off and say, I do this for Jesus. I'm doing this for the Lord. Jesus says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My, my. About to take his head, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This ain't no hill for a climber. Amen. There's a crown of righteousness waiting on me, young man. Is there a crown waiting for you? History says, legend says, that the man that was going to chop his head off got converted. How many jailers got converted? Paul, falsely in prison, was speaking to them, writing letters. Well, what you writing today, old Paul? Well, let's see. All things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord and them that are called according to His purpose. That's what you're writing. No sad, sappy stuff to old girlfriends or friends or relatives or buddies or judges or lawyers. No, no, just Lord's got this. He's got me in the palm of His hand. Are you with me, saints? His heart wasn't hardened. His heart was soft. Make me a soft heart, oh God. Make me a soft heart. Let's, let's stand to our feet. As that song says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, prepare my heart. I have felt my heart from time to time. I feel like that it, it, it almost couldn't be moved. You ever been to that place where you all I've seen it all? Heard it all, seen it all, done it all. And you're like, nothing new under the sun. But then the Lord, boy, he's got a way of slapping you, don't he? You didn't see that, though, did you? He said, no, Lord. And then you find yourself laying somewhere, crying like a little baby. Anybody ever cried like a little baby before? find yourself crying or you find yourself saying something to someone that you love or saying something to someone that you like that you shouldn't have said and you drive away and you're like I'm a bad person I'm an evil person anybody ever said that or am I just bad why did I say that why did I do that why did I act that way we got to guard our heart don't we we got to guard our heart. Oh, Peter thought he was doing the Lord a service when he cut that man's ear off. He was reacting in kind. That's how we would react. And the Lord said, get thee behind me, Satan. That's rough, ain't it? Lord, I thought I was helping you, Lord. I don't need your help. My heart's good. I mean, he's with me. My, my. There was a storm blowed up. The storm was bad. And according to Jonah, he said, there ain't but one way for the storm to stop. Unless you want to see casually all the way around, you want to throw me over. Everything will be lost if you don't. Even Paul felt the same way. You're going to have to throw me overboard, Jonah said. What? Well, cast lots if you got to, but this is what's going to happen. Boy, his heart knew what was up, didn't he? Throw me into that raging sea. It's all right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we got to keep our heart in a place, our conscience clean, our heart in a place where we can help not just ourselves but one another. I mean, I invite you. Maybe your heart is in a condition that it needs to be molded a little. It needs to be softened a little. I would invite you down to the front. Just give it to God. That's what I have to do. I have to give it to God. I had family members that I felt like had just done me dirty, you know, and I, I had to just give it to God. I had other people, had other things, had other instances. Had people that I didn't really know that done me really, really bad, and I just had to give it to God because I wanted to kill them. How many knows what I'm talking about? But I want to be right with the Lord. Do you want to be right with the Lord? Well, let's just study on this a few minutes as she plays and sings as a little song. And let's just, let's just give it to the Lord. The altar is open. Open your heart to receive your help. Your help comes from above. Open your heart to receive your help. Let God help you this morning.